What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back doing another preview video for round five of the World Cup. The game I am most excited for this weekend, Ireland versus Scotland. What a game this is going to turn out to be. This might be probably the most viewed game of the weekend. I can see so many different teams and so many different nationality supporters being very, very interested in this game. Obviously, the Ireland and Scotland supporters are going to be wanting to get into this game and see an awesome one. South African supporters and uh, and the team themselves will be very interested in this game because there are outcomes of this game that see South Africa not get into the quarterfinals. Um, and also, if you're a French or All Black supporter, you want to be keeping an eye on this game because depending on the end up of this game... Uh, is going to determine who those teams probably go on to play in the quarter finals. All very exciting. I'm really, really hyped for this one. So, of course, we're going to have a run through the teams. I'm actually going to try and go through them a bit quicker uh, today because I want to talk more about what we can expect from this game and just how important it is in terms of, uh, of this World Cup. So, if you enjoy this style of video, make sure to drop this video a like. And, of course, if you want to see more rugby content on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel out in the whole YouTube algorithm thing. Now, uh, I Ireland versus Scotland. Ireland last week not playing. Uh, they had their bye week after an enormous game versus uh, South Africa two weeks ago. Coming away with that win against the 7-1 bench of South Africa. I've seen so much different discourse at the end of that game and different people's thoughts. Um, I just thought it was an awesome game of rugby to watch. And I'm really hoping, kind of, we get to see those two teams progress. Just because I would personally uh, enjoy seeing that one again. Uh, they'll meet back up in the final if that is how it works out. And of course, with that win, put Ireland in the best position to get uh, into those quarterfinals and maybe even topping the pool with uh, with that big victory. Now, going into this week, um, they put out an extremely similar team to the one that we got to see playing against that uh, South Africa team. It's one thing that I actually haven't mentioned in any of the preview videos or the review videos, is that Ireland is probably the one team across uh, this World Cup so far that it doesn't really feel like they've put out a B team for any of their games. They keep putting out this monster team again and again and again, and they've come away with like no injuries i mean that's a real testament to the the sort of fitness and and the ability of these irish players um that I, there just isn't a big injury to talk about so many other teams are struggling at the minute with uh, with injury concerns and testing that depth of squad ireland are putting out the big guns every week and uh, just seem to be fine with it, even though they've had some some really, really big physical games and stuff. So uh, take a look at the team then. Uh, in terms of the front eight, it's almost identical to what we got to see going up against um, South Africa. Andrew Porter, Dan Sheehan and Tyg Furlong. Dan Sheehan coming in um, to that hooker position will probably be a really big boost um, to this Ireland team. You have to say the line-out situation going up against South Africa was not good. It was the one area of the game I thought Ireland were really struggling in, uh, but not so much the, the line-out as a whole. It was just the throw Rodan Keller's um, throwing completely off in that game. Dan Sheehan came on in that second half and steadied the ship completely and really put them on a, um, a better trajectory in that game. So seeing Dan Sheehan in this front row is a really, really positive thing for me to be seeing. Um, that locked apartment, Ty Byrne and Ian Henderson. James Ryan moved to the bench uh, for this game, which I think is an interesting call. I, I would probably have had Ty Byrne and James Ryan starting this game, uh, but Ian Henderson getting the uh, the look in. Maybe James Ryan picked up a bit of a knock or something and he's, he's just been put on the bench or maybe they just want him for leadership later in to the game because of course he's done captaincy before for this team um, and then that back row Peter Omani Josh Van der Fleer and Kalen Doris in that uh, that number eight should all three of these lads putting in an enormous stint uh, against that South African forward pack uh, two weeks ago who came on with a seven forwards bench my god these lads put in uh, a really hell of a good stint and uh, in terms of their defensive work just did not stop all day long um, in terms of the halfback partnership Jameson Gibson Park and Sexton of course is what we'd be expecting for this uh, this big game centre partnership Bundyaki and Gary Ring rows exactly what we got to see um, against that South Africa team as well. Bundyaki is just... Is, ba is Bendiaki up for player of the tournament for a lot of people? If he is, make sure you drop that down in the comment section, but because he is sticking his hand up in, in every single game he's playing in. And then finally, in the back three, James Lowe, Mac Hansen, Hugo Keenan. Who else are going to be? Absolutely uh, monster, monster team. This is probably as good as it gets, right? Um, across this tournament, I've been saying, you know, they've been bordering on the edge. I think Dan Sheehan back in. Maybe some people would want to see James Ryan over Ian Henderson. I personally might slightly rate uh, James Ryan over uh, Ian Henderson when he plays an all-round solid game. He's got rid of those penalties out of his game now, which is really nice to see from James Ryan. He's been performing much better for me considering over the last couple of years. He did used to give away quite a few penalties when we see him in the Six Nations and stuff. Um, so that might be the only change to, to mention, but I assume James Ryan's put on that bench for a 
reason. Um, Andy Farrell tends to not just do things eh, because whatever. There's normally a very good uh, reason for it. In terms of the bench, then Ronan Keller, Dave Kilcoyne, and uh, Finley Beelan. There was talk about uh, Keen Healy being fit and ready and coming back into this World Cup team. Uh, might be a little bit of a push to have got him back in before the, the quarterfinals, semifinals, and what have you, but uh, still a solid front row for them. Rest of the replacement forwards, James Ryan and Jack Conan uh, to be coming on in that second half alongside of Connor Murray, Jack Crowley, and Stuart McCloskey taking that final back position for Ireland. Now, this is the one where I'd be saying, well, Robbie Henshaw, for me, would be the uh, the obvious looking. Apparently, he's picked up a hamstring injury, uh, which has ruled him out of this game. Not necessarily the tournament, but for this game, most certainly, um, he's been ruled out for this one. So, Stuart McCloskey coming in. Um, maybe not quite as versatile as someone like Robbie Henshaw. I feel that Stuart McCloskey is a little bit more one-dimensional, uh, should we say, in terms of his attack. And he's a big enough unit. I take it if you had an injury to the wing, um, you, you would probably still be fine chucking him out on the wing because he's a, he's a big old lad with some big pace. But I imagine he's coming on maybe for Bundyaki at some point in this game uh, just to keep that charge from the uh, the inside centre, which we, we see Ireland do a lot, right? They come off a set piece, they play one phase, and it's just one guy carrying. It's just always Bundyaki uh, smashing his way up, making a, a good few metres for them. So a solid um, Ireland team across the board going up against Scotland. Let's move on to talk about Scotland because Scotland, of course, last week played Romania, put an enormous score on Romania bigger than I was expecting Darcy Graham just having the game of his life in terms of the uh, the try scoring uh, going into this week they've made uh, quite a few changes now something that stands out to me in this Scotland team it is identical uh, pretty much there's only one change actually think about it there's only one change but it's pretty much identical to the team that went up against South Africa and took them on in that physical game the same as Ireland did um, a couple of weeks back and Scotland to me in that game versus South Africa in that first half especially looked to front up against the physicality they looked pretty head on head pretty even um, so going up against Ireland they've put on basically the same starting 15 and I think it's probably a good move for them now Scotland going into this one uh, don't have a lot to lose they, uh, they're they probably going to be going out of the World Cup if they don't come away with a win in this game so you might as well throw the kitchen sink at it they've obviously uh, backed that same team we saw against South Africa just to try and meet Ireland in terms of that forwards game and then if these backs finally get unleashed man that that, that can be rare the uh, the real turning point is uh, so in the front row Pierre Schumann George Turner and a Fagus and this is probably who we'd be uh, expecting right in that front row Richie Gray and Grant Gilchrist taking over in the uh, in the lock department Jamie Ritchie Rory Darge and Jack Dempsey in that uh, that back row. So returns of uh, some pretty solid back rows. Rory Dodge got over for a try last week. Um, and Jamie Ritchie coming back in as captain after we've seen the, the captaincy switch around a few times over the course of this tournament. In the halfback partnership, Ali Price going in alongside of Finn Russell. So no Ben White, uh, which I did think was kind of surprising. I don't believe he's picked up an injury. Ali Price has obviously, um, you know, shown some sort of uh, impressiveness to uh, to Gregor Townsend, but also, you know, maybe an experienced level, someone who's played Ireland a lot um, in the course of the Six Nations. Well, maybe that's the move they've gone for there. Finn Russell coming back in at 10, even though Ben Healy um, had a really, really good game against Romania. I, I actually thought maybe they would play something a little bit wild here and maybe actually look to have Ben Healy start which a lot of people go mad about but I feel like you could actually have Ben Healy start and have Finn Russell come on later um, when the, the Irish forwards are a little bit more tight I think Ben Healy organised the play very well very professionally and I like what Finn Russell brings in terms of a bit of a wild card element I think maybe him coming on in the second half against a, a bit more of a tired Ireland team you could actually make a bit more of an impact as opposed to having Finn Russell starting but that was a, an off the wall thought I was sort of having to myself last uh, last night in terms of the centre partnership Tui Blotter and Hugh Jones come back together for uh, the big game against Ireland and then of course in that back three the return of Duan van der Merwe Darcy Graham scoring all his tries last week and Blair Kinghorn in the uh, in the starting fullback position. This is about as big as both teams get. I'm really hyped for this game. I'm really looking forward to this one. And then quickly in terms of the subs, Ewan Ashburn, Rory Sutherland, and VP Nell. Uh, it's something I've been saying. I've always called him WP Nell, uh, but I've been hearing more and more on commentary people calling him VP Nell. So I'll make that change if the people prefer that. I've, I've always just thought of it as WP Nell without really paying too much attention to it. Um, rest of the replacement forwards going alongside them. Scott Cummings, Matt Fagerson, and Luke Crosby. They've gone for the 6-2. Um, always a, a big call going up against Ireland. South Africa went for a 7-1. And uh, an Ireland fought against the uh, the forwards and managed to hold out in that game very, very well. So 6-2, 
Uh, I think they'll be uh, be loving the opportunity for this one. And then in the replacement backs, George Horn comes in alongside of, uh, of Ollie Smith, who was also doing pretty well um, against Romania. So both teams going fully loaded for this one. Both teams got a lot going on for this game. Now, there's a lot of talking points um, around this game, which is what I want to dive into a little bit more um, and what the outcome of this means. Now, there's so many different iterations because of how close all the teams are in Pool B. But uh, out of all the different permutations, I'll chuck them up on here so that you guys can sort of look at them. It's based on, you know, which team wins this game game and by how many points and the bonus points as well of who can come first second or third and how it will work itself out uh but the the big talking points around this game for me ireland just need the win it's the most important thing for them if they get the win they just top the pool and what have you um scotland have nothing to lose in this game they're already going out if they don't just take this game by the by the horns and take ireland on scotland have nothing to lose and everything to gain basically if it's a draw or if uh ireland win scotland are out so you might as well throw everything at this game i maybe even looking at those three points isn't even going to be the the way scotland want to think about this maybe they even look at tries maybe that's what they've tested out so much against romania with testing darcy graham and duan van der Merwe with how many um, defenders he can beat maybe going for those tries is going to be the answer maybe that's why they've loaded up on those six forwards thinking driving more tries just an easier way to try and get over the um, the try line i've already seen a lot of different talk points around match fixing which is kind of wild because i don't really think that's a, that's a thing you get to see a lot in in world rugby there's grand conspiracies about wanting to uh, to knock teams out I actually would consider the, the concept of like, do teams want to win or lose this game? Not because a team is necessarily targeting to have the, the two Northern Hemisphere teams um, qualify, but actually a little bit more based on that whoever wins this pool most likely goes on to play in New Zealand. Um, and even though France beat New Zealand in that game in Pool A, I feel like I would rather play France than New Zealand at the minute because New Zealand seem to be going from strength to strength whereas France have had a few injuries along the way they are missing a couple of uh, pivotal players along the way I feel like maybe taking on France might be a, a big opportunity for, for some teams whereas I feel like New Zealand's going to be a, a tough old ass to get through maybe finishing second in this pool is actually a, a better situation to be in but of course you guys can uh, can fully disagree with this where do we see this game going then I think this one's going to be exciting now Ireland go into this game favorites normally in the Six Nations but when I did my Six Nations predictions like what like 10 months ago now um, I had Ireland to win that game and, and kind of win it comfortably but this one has a little bit more weight behind it because Scotland desperately need this one in order to uh, to cement that uh, that quarterfinal place and they need the win they need to be um, getting a good amount of points in this game um, so I can see Scotland throwing everything at this and sometimes that team that's backed in the corner ends up being one of the most dangerous teams to uh, to play against. We know Scotland can put in big performances. Um, and Ireland might just want to watch out for themselves. And they might be having one eye already on quarterfinals. Who are we going up against? Could we be playing New Zealand? You've got to get through this game first. There's so many different uh, permutations of this. But this one is the game I am looking forward to most. Um, in terms of how we think this game is going to go then... I am still leaning towards Ireland. The performances put in by Ireland across this World Cup for me have looked far more convincing. They've had little issues going wrong for them, but they seem to be being fixed by different players coming in, starting in like the line-out situation got so much better after Dan Sheen came on. They face tough opponents and they've 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 come through it, you know, relatively unscathed in terms of their, their injuries and even their own scoreboard has been looking good. Um, I'm leaning towards Ireland. I can see Ireland just making sure those three points are continuous, getting the kicks over the post and just trying to ensure they get that win. But Bonus point, not maybe the, the, the main concern for them as opposed to getting the win. Scotland are going to be all out attack, wanting to try and get that win. And, but there's still permutations where Scotland win this game and still don't get into the um, the quarterfinals. So points are massively important for Scotland, as well as somehow denying Ireland, um, like the try bonus points or, you know, finishing within seven. It's a really tough ask. I'm currently leaning towards Ireland for me. Um, and I'm going to say Ireland to win this one. I'll go by 12. I think there'll be some iterations of, uh, of kicking from the boot of uh, Johnny Sexton. But let me know what you guys think of these teams down in the uh, in the comment section, as well as your own score predictions. This is the one I am most excited for as a uh, as a rugby fan. I'm a neutral going into this. I haven't got one foot in uh, in either door. So uh, I'm looking forward to this one and just sitting down and watching a, a great game of rugby. And you have to know, we will be doing a review on this game, no matter the outcome or whatever ends up. And there will be a review out on the channel after this game. So make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date with all the latest videos guys i'll see you all next time bye bye Everybody.